hi everyone. I'm with Coach Beaton for another uh, episode of Champion uh, Beyond the Huddle. Really nice to have you here today, Coach. How are you? How's 2024 treating you? Yeah, no, so far so good. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, happy to be on today for sure. Perfect, perfect. So um, obviously the goal of this call, I kind of uh, talked to you about it offline a little bit, but hopefully it's just to get to know more about uh, your journey, obviously the great things that you're doing at, at Williston. Um, I've been involved with the game. I'm originally from Montreal, and uh, in the past few years, I've got to know uh, Dominic uh, DiFilippo that went through your program, who's at Harvard now. And uh, whenever I see young men like that, uh, definitely doing something for themselves within this game, but exemplifying much more than just being an athlete, uh, I think it's it's pretty awesome, right? And just being a part of that is something that's really, really cool. So yeah. um, perfect. So if you don't mind telling us, um, how did your journey uh, start with football? I know you've always been around uh, Massachusetts, you yeah. know, born and raised in the area. If you could tell us about your journey with football. Yeah, so for me, I mean, I come from, uh, fortunately, a very athletic family. A lot of um, family members of mine played college athletics. Um, my dad played quarterback in college at Tufts University. Uh, my grandfather was actually the head football coach at Milton Academy and athletic director there for years. Um, so that's a boarding school just outside Boston. And that's actually where some of my oldest memories are at Milton. So, you know, I, I always knew that I wanted to, you know, do something in football down the road. Um, I was fortunate enough to play three sports in high school, football, basketball, and baseball. And then I did two sports at Bates College up in Maine, um, played football, baseball there. And then when I graduated in 2010, I coached football uh, at Tufts University for six years and I've uh, been at Wilson for the last eight. So really cool. And uh, obviously I've looked up uh, Bates. I've looked up uh, Tufts University also. And one thing that a lot of these programs have in, have in common, obviously, is that they're grounded in, in school with very high academic uh, yeah. standards. Uh, they're about, obviously, building uh, great people as much as possible. So if you could just tell us maybe about your experience uh, at Bates as a player, uh, first and foremost, what are your greatest memories uh, out there? Yeah, I man, I think the biggest thing for me is just the relationships that I was able to build over those four years. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to stay in contact with a lot of those guys, especially my football teammates. Um, you know, I'm still very close with them. We, we talk probably once a week through chat, uh, just texting each other. Um, I, I think there's, it, it's very, very um, a special relationship playing college football with, with a group of guys. And, you know, again, I've been fortunate to to, you know, call those guys friends for a very long time. And, um, you know, we're getting together next month. You know, we get to, our families get together every summer. And um, so it's all, always fun, you know, talking the good old days whenever we, we get together. Definitely. And obviously you went on after that to coach at Tufts uh, University. Um, yeah. I'm curious to know, was coaching – always a natural progression for you in your heart just having been around your grandfather having been around uh, your family was just was this something that was natural to you or did it grow on you over time and uh, you figured out that hey this is truly what I want to do yeah I always knew I wanted to coach football I mean I was fortunate um, in my sophomore year of college I actually did an independent study with the uh, Bates football coaches so I always knew that was somewhere I wanted to go um, and we start, you know, start it at the college level and see how it went. Um, you know, so, go, you know, I applied for a bunch of jobs coming out of college, had a bunch of interviews and uh, thought Tufts was the best fit for me. I was able to get my master's there, which was a huge, huge plus. Um, and then, you know, at, at Tufts, I had a great six years. You know, Coach uh, Bill Sampko hired me and then um, Jay Savetti took over the last five years that I was there and he's still having a successful run. Uh, but what I loved at, at Tufts is, you know, we, we struggled early on. We actually lost 31 games in a row. Um, and uh, we just got better every year those last couple of years that I was there. And, you know, pretty similar at, at Williston. You know, we, we struggled at, at first. I mean, I didn't have a winning season until uh, year five or six. Until, sorry, year six was our first winning season. So it, it definitely 
took a long time to get there and, um, you know, just doing it the right way and doing it with great kids is, is what made it really special. Um, whenever I listen to you, to you speak, it makes me think of something. Um, recently I've watched a, a, a video and it was talking about how, uh, sometimes even when things don't seem to work out, uh, if you do everything the right way and you believe in your heart that you're doing everything the right way, uh, that's exactly when you need to keep going, even though it's not working. Uh, ultimately, it will work. And I think that's kind of the testament to, to your journey where, hey, sometimes uh, when you're standing on certain principles and you have standards and you want to build things a certain way for specific reasons, um, sometimes maybe the results might not come, right? It's part of right. it as a player, as a coach. But ultimately, uh, you do break through. And it's just a matter, of, there's a lot of things to learn uh, in this for sure. So I Absolutely. think it's cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the thing, you know, I always say is, you know, I don't get paid by how many games I win, right? And, and I'm the most competitive person you'll ever be around. I think any of my coaches would say that, any of my players, former or current, would say that. Um, you know, I would say it doesn't matter if we're playing pickup hoops, foosball, ping pong, chess, like, I'm going to beat you. And that's just my mentality. That's just how I've been my whole life. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, while, yes, I'm a competitive person, you know, we, we want to make sure that that we're going about it the right way. And, and I've said to every recruit, every, you know, parent, you know, family, whoever, we have some of the highest character people I've ever been around here um, at Wilson. And, and that, and that I think is, is what allowed us to kind of keep fighting. We, we've been fortunate enough to have a very uh, consistent coaching staff these eight years as well. And I think, you know, when we, you know, one and seven, three and five, two and six, three and five, and, um, you know, not having the years we wanted from a wins and loss standpoint, you know, we just kept battling and kept, you know, bringing in great kids. We always had really strong college placement. Um, and, you know, fortunately we were able to turn the corner uh, three years ago. Mm. I have a similar background with, with my father having been a coach uh, at a very high level also. And when I was younger, I didn't necessarily always understood certain things you would tell me. Uh, you know, I kind of picked them up later. Uh, if you could tell us maybe uh, some of the biggest takeaways um, that you keep with you till this day, just by being around your grandfather, being around uh, your father, what did you learn that carried over to who Coach Beaton is today? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I've been so fortunate to have unbelievable role models in my life. Um, you know, again, it, it, and while I'm just talking about football with my dad and my grandfather, uh, my mom is a Hall of Fame field hockey coach too, you know? Oh, and, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, so she, I mean, and I have uncles and I, I mean, my uncle has been the head coach at Amherst College for hockey for 40 years. My mm. aunt, has been a national coach of the year in field hockey in the state of Connecticut. Um, I mean, and, and there's many, many more it's coaches. In the well. it's yeah, in the just family. to name a few. Um, but yeah, I think you know my parents did an unbelievable job raising myself and my three siblings, and and you know I was so so fortunate to have this support of them from a very young age. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing I, I think I've learned from from them and and all other role models in my life. Um, is, is really just to outwork everybody, you know, and, and my parents have worked so hard to, to be where they are today. And, and you know, for me, noticing that and, and using that as an inspiration because, you know, they're, they're two of the happiest people I know. And, and I, a lot of it is a result of, of their work ethic. And, you know, I, I think, yeah, and I think, you know, our, our coaching staff and our players would say that, you know, it doesn't matter if it's in the weight room, in the classroom, whatever, like we want to outwork everybody. Um, I'm going to watch more film and make more recruiting calls and all that um, because I, I want to be successful at what I do. And, and a lot of that comes from the role models that I've had. Hmm. One thing that's great about truly everything around football is that we do have um, the blessing of being around amazing role models. Yep. Okay. And you did your master's in education. Uh, while at Tufts University, and that's the thing. Also, I find, especially as a as a coach, one way or another, you're a teacher, you're an educator. Uh, was that also part of the plan to kind of dive into that also a lot more to understand how to teach, 
what to teach, how to transmit a vision, how to develop young people, or did you have something else in mind at first? Yeah, great, great question. So for me, I always knew in the back of my mind, prep school um, was going to be a reality. You know, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know if I wanted to try to climb the, you know, the college ranks or, um, but I, I knew in the back of my mind, I, I always thought about prep school. And, and that's why I wanted to get my master's of arts in teaching in case I became a teacher down the road. Um, but I say to anybody, I mean, if you can teach, you can coach. If you can coach, you can teach. It, it really is the same thing. It, it's obviously you have to have an understanding of the material. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, just investing in kids' lives and, and doing what's what's in their best interest. I mean, that's going to motivate. I mean, it, you can think of all the role models you've had, whether it be a coach or a teacher over the years. You know, those people that truly cared about me as a person, you know, I always seem to have a little bit more success in their field. And, um, you know, I say to our coaches all the time, you know, you know our, our kids, you know, their self, their interest is what's most important for us. And we need to make sure that we're always remembering who they are as people and, and all that before, way before who they are as a player. Mm, great stuff. And after a great run, obviously, at uh, Tufts University, bringing around great people, getting your master's, looking for different opportunities now to, you know, continue your, your passion and uh, coach, but also teach and basically help people uh, develop. One thing I, I know about you also, as I've done my research a little bit, and uh, I find we're very similar there, where you're about family. Uh, yep. This is a, a very strong value uh, for you. And obviously, we'll dive into talk of, talking about Williston, uh, Northampton uh, football, and that school and all the amazing things over there. But if you could tell us, um, why did the values of that school fit yours? What made it feel like home? And why was this the right place for, because it's not only about football, it's also about bringing your family somewhere, yeah. you know, raising your your children in an environment that you believe in and bringing other people's kids and other athletes who have dreams for their life into an environment where they can truly grow. So I know that's a loaded question, but yeah, I'm yeah. passionate well, about it. So I got, I got a lot for you with that. So I, I've been, so my wife is uh, one of our nurses on campus as well. So mm. um, when I, when I accepted the job at Williston, we had just found out she was pregnant with our first child. So wow. I, oldest was actually born in Boston on August 18th. We moved to Williston on August 25th. So we moved, you know, away from our family when my daughter was one week old, which, which wasn't certainly <laughs> the easiest thing to wow. do. Um, but the thing that really attracted me to Williston was the community, was the people. And mm. um, I, I just, I feel so fortunate to work with the people that I do. And it's just such a supportive community. A, a great example I, I got for you is, uh, my youngest one was born eight weeks early while we were on vacation uh, down in Rhode mm -hmm. Island. And so she's, she's like I said, she's in the hospital. We were fortunately able to get her transferred uh, up here. And the day we came back, it was actually my middle one's second birthday. And, you know, as young parents, we want to make sure that she got the presents, the cake, get all that stuff. And yeah. we had nothing. Like we were – in a whirlwind, you know, just had our, our third baby eight weeks early. And there's obviously a lot of complications with that. We come home to our apartment and the Wilson faculty had gone into our house up through campus safety, of course, um, wow. and had gone and got presents, had got ba happy birthday banners, ice cream, cake, had meals in, hmm. in the fridge for that week. And, you know, it was a pretty emotional moment for my wife and I, who obviously hadn't slept much. And I think that's <laughs> Williston, you know, it just... It, and it starts from the top with with our head of school, Bob Hill. Um, he just truly, truly cares about people. And I think that's one of our biggest selling points. I will never say we have the best facilities of all the prep schools. I will never say we're the highest ranked academically of all the prep schools. There are, are schools that have better facilities, higher rank, all that stuff. Um, I will put the character of our people in the community up against anybody. And that's not to knock anyone else. It's just to really – you know, showcase how special it is to be here at Willis and why I've been here. I say to recruits all the time, I guess, oh, are you, you going to leave for another job? All that stuff. I say, I've been here for eight years. I've never applied for another job. Right? That, that's pretty mm -hmm. rare. That's pretty rare in this profession. Um, Definitely. Yeah. And it's really just because of how happy my family and I are. Mm, that's awesome. 
that's awesome and I, I find this is so important for uh younger athletes or a high school prep anywhere to to listen to carefully and also parents because obviously you love football you want your education but you got to be in a place i truly believe where you're comfortable uh, tr mostly important where people do care about you where people have a plan uh for you right because Within this game, hey, I've been in this situation in college where I had to I had to transfer, and it's nothing bad. It's it's right. a business sometimes, right? Uh, you do get recruited someone somewhere. Someone takes another job, leave situations, change. If you put football aside, are you truly happy with your right. situation? Do you see yourself there? And that's something that's so important. So it's great that you, when you're the head of the snake, as the coach, you feel that way. So it's definitely easy to transmit it to other people in a very genuine way, which is awesome. Right. Uh, and believe. to be honest, with you, what, just to add on to that, what I always say when, when families are picking Williston or when our current families are looking at other prep schools, I call it the broken leg test, right? If you mm. break your leg and can never play football again, are you still going to be happy at that school, right? Mm. Because there's so much more. I, again, when, when prospective families, I know, I know that football is a huge reason why they're yep. choosing Wilson. And I, and I get that. But football is over in, in the middle of November, right? And, and what happens those last six months, um, if you're only here because of football, we are not your best option. And, and that's what I always say to families looking. I say, I understand football is important, but it can't be the only reason that you're coming to Williston. Hmm. And to piggyback off that, I'll give the example of uh, Dominique, you know, De yeah. Filippo. Uh, as I was talking to him, and he's a he's a young man with a head of, on his shoulders, definitely a good football player. But I remember him telling me, "Hey, when he first got on campus, uh, his head was kind of turning in every yeah. direction at first because the goal uh, is to prepare uh, young people for for life, yep. uh, for college specifically." And for that, it's about uh, having a certain schedule. It's about being regimented. It's about doing things a certain way. So if right. you could tell us about just like the Williston way, you know, uh, that culture is very important. What are the main elements of that culture for you? When kids come in, uh, what can they expect? Yeah, I, I think just having a team first mentality in all that we do, you know, and you know, I, I understand that, you know, if you're a receiver right, and you're trying to play college football, you want the ball thrown to you every single time, right? But the success that we have as a team is only going to help with our college placement, right? Colleges want players from winning programs. They want, um, you know, guys from programs who are doing it the right way. Um, so just having that team first mentality. And I, and I say that to a lot of, you know, especially it's a little bit harder with those offensive skill guys where, you know, the ball in their hands is going to impact a lot more. Whereas in defense, you're more reacting. Um, but I would say, you know, if you if you don't have a touch in a game or something like that, how are you still going to do? You know, Nate Nate Ellis is a sophomore for us right now. And he's a, he's a great example of this where, you know, he unfortunately tore his ACL halfway through mm -hmm. our season. But in the week before that, you know, he didn't have the ball as much as he wanted. It was It was a rainy, pouring day. Um, and he played one of the best games that he had all year. And it might not have shown in, in the, the stats, but he had great ball security. He had a really good kickoff return. He had un, did an unbelievable job blocking and also uh, dove in, in on a punt. And, you know, the uh, ball's going to the end zone. He saved it so that the other team got the ball at the one-yard line, right? So yeah. just different things like that. And, and that team-first mentality is going to go a long way. Um, mm. I do want to say one quick story about Dom before I forget. Course, um, and I think this, this sums him up perfectly. So um, he was fortunate enough. He was in my dorm for two years. I'm the dorm head of uh, one of our, of our biggest dorm on campus. And, um, and he became really close to my daughter. So my daughter would have been probably five or six years old when he left. And mm. when he was graduating, she, she was crying. She was wow. crying. She said, you know, when are we going to see Dom again? You know, and if, if that doesn't sum up, you know, who a 18, 19 year old boy is, you know, with the way that a, a five or six year old girl is upset um, wow. just because of how, you know, he made her feel for the two years he was here. And I, I think that's so special, you know, and that's, you know, as a coach, as a father, uh, I mean, that's as much as I could ask for. That's powerful stuff. 
that's definitely powerful stuff. So if we kind of stay in that topic, uh, um, obviously that term comes back to my mind always family, you know, yep. from like your values, but also to what's being built over here and at Williston and how everything operates from the school to the program. Uh, when it comes also to just the community, the alumni who, who go on, and a lot of them are being placed, you know, in different places, also doing great things. Um, how is it, you know, with the uh, with the alumni, uh, kind of talking to the to the younger guys, being involved, uh, wearing that uh, that logo on their on their chest in their hearts, basically. Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, we have such a great alumni group. Um, you know, I, I'm always amazed by how many people, you know, especially in season, are sending me an email, a text, a DM, you know, wishing wishing me good luck. Um, you know, I I think that's always always special, you know, hearing from them. Um, so yeah, we definitely have an awesome group of, of, of people, um, uh, that are always watching our games and, um, you know, and going to the games as well. You know, we've had a bunch of alumni events at games and it just seeing them come back and, and support our current student athletes is really special. Hmm. From, from your opinion, I'm curious to know, okay, because this is a conversation I have with a lot of athletes a lot of parents, a lot of coaches also, okay, is that I find um, I obviously in college people are being developed, but they come in a little bit more mature, a little bit more clear about what they want, how they want to achieve it exactly. I find high school, prep school, it's a perfect moment to really, really develop uh, these things, okay, to develop these things. And it's a moment also where, quite frankly, you don't know what you don't know you know, right. if you're a younger athlete. So when it comes to um, having uh, success, okay, and by having success, I really view it in a way as maximizing your potential, okay, yep. for whatever you want to do. In your opinion, what is it that younger athletes don't know, maybe, that the quicker they get um, exposed to and accustomed to and absorb, it will definitely help open doors for them? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the the first thing is kind of realizing that a lot of athletes are, are big fish in small ponds. And um, I we've found that when, you know, our, our players will come here, they might have been the best player in their high school team or what, but there's everyone else's too, you know, and I think kind of humbling them and, and having them realize like, wow, this is not, you know, going to be as easy as I thought. I mean, the level of football that we play against is it's unreal. I mean, um, I just, I'm always amazed by the competition every single Saturday, you know, there's, there's no easy, easy games. And that's why I, I love the coach. Um, it makes it a lot more fun, but I think for those guys is understanding, okay, like getting humbled a little bit and then having to put in that much more work in order to be at the level that you're hoping for. Um, and, and I think that's, you know, that should be motivating more than anything. Mm. And you're right, because, again, as, as I look, uh, you guys are definitely playing uh, some of the toughest competition, uh, in my opinion, in like New England uh, yeah. area. It's definitely high level uh, football. So every single week uh, is definitely a, a, a battle for sure. And it's a great experience for also these kids, just because I, I truly believe that uh, once you haven't been exposed to something, uh, it's difficult to adjust to it, you know, you kind of know what you know, but once you've been exposed to a certain speed, exposed to a, a certain level of, of play, uh, naturally, I find human beings and athletes, uh, we have the capability to be the ultimate adaptation machine. If we yep. truly want to get better, we adapt um, very, very quickly. Um, obviously, what's cool also about prep schools, I believe you guys have athletes coming in from all over, uh, yep. obviously locally, but we've seen it with uh, Dominique. We've seen it with other people. Uh, they come from in different parts of the country, maybe uh, out of the country, you know, yes. like like Canada, for instance. So if you could tell us about like uh, just the adjustment that some of these guys have when they come in, uh, what they can expect. You already gave great advice when it comes to that. And maybe you, um, how you've... Um, 
how you've been exposed to, to, to players and people and young men from different places and the things that they, they, they have to offer, which are pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the first thing is, is helping all of our players realize that they're coming from very different backgrounds, right? Whether yeah. it be, you know, economically, racially, uh, geographically, uh, you know, there, it is a very, very diverse group and finding ways to get them to connect and to trust each yeah. other and, and to, you know, to be great teammates. Um, I think, we, you know, we try to do that as soon as possible. And mm-hmm. the one thing I've heard a lot from our guys is, you know, oh, coach, I'm, I'm shocked that you know, I feel like I've already met my best friends. I've been here for two days, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, having them kind of really, you know, get acclimated, trust each other and, you know, really, yeah. you know, put their own interests behind the team is uh, is really what's what's most important for our guys you know especially especially early on because we don't have much of a preseason so definitely the more that we can do that the better off we're going to be wow. and when it comes to again maximizing your full potential potential and being the best version of yourself let's say as a as in as a student athlete just in in general from your perspective um, you obviously see a lot see a lot of uh, talented guys. You know, you yep. have seen a lot of talented guys. Um, is it the most important thing? Is it the 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 biggest differentiator, or is it just kind of what can open the door maybe and put you one foot in the door? But there's so much more uh, that's needed. Also, you talked about being a good teammate, right? Yep. You talked about uh, character. Uh, you talked about doing the right things. Um, what's really the biggest differentiator in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you know the two. I would the two I would say would be just being a great teammate and work ethic. You know, because mm-hmm. you know when when colleges are recruiting high school football players, right? They're recruiting 18, 19 year old kids, trying to project how they'll be when they're 21, 22, 23, right? So there's a lot that can change. You know, and, and when you look at the transfer portal and all that, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's making recruiting harder. And, and I think, mm-hmm. you know, what I say to all prospective families when they come on campus and visit, I say, you know, I, I feel confident that I can get your film in front of anybody um, mm-hmm. that of any school that you're looking for. But at the end of the day, they're the ones going to be making the decision on your ability level. Right. If you mm-hmm. can play at that level, it's my job as your coach to talk to them about who you are as a person, who you are as a student, who you are in the weight room, what you're like in the dorm. Um, and if I can help sell, you know, the school on you there, that's going to be, mm. that's going to pay off a lot for you. Mm. You you talked about uh, recruiting and I, I find it so true because what maybe a lot of athletes don't necessarily understand is that college coaches, in my opinion, uh, they recruit a lot on potential also, yep. right? And the thing about potential is that you're always unsure of it. I mean, right. you, you see it, but you don't know whether or not it's going to materialize. But one thing that's concrete, one thing that's for sure are the things that are measurable right now. If someone comes on time, if someone uh, has the right character, if someone does the right things, you know that this will lead to maximizing that potential developing that athlete into uh what he or she can be and i find what i like about williston and what you're telling me about the culture is that there's definitely a big emphasis and a focus on developing all these things and truly developing the individual to make sure that that potential comes into fruition because those things are the surefire things that will stay with the athlete forever football or not yep absolutely and and that's where you know for us like i try to bring as many young guys as i can right and i want to develop them as players you know we're very very lucky uh we have a phenomenal strength program our strength coaches voted number one uh strength coach in the state of massachusetts last year so some people might say they have the best strength program our guy was literally voted number one so Mm. you know we feel really good about that um you know, so that development in our coaching staff, I mean, our coaches do a heck of a job. Um, you know, they, in Coach Lee, Jason Lee is as good of a coordinator as as there is. 
Um, but he's another one. Like he, he's a great coach, but he's a better person. And that's why mm -hmm. I think for all of our assistant coaches are the same where they do a great job and, and work hard, but they're just better people. And our players see that, right? You know, mm -hmm. I, I have my end of the year meetings with all of our players individually. And that's one thing that comes up a lot. Like, coach, it's clear that you and the rest of the coaching staff all gets along. Like you're all friends. You're all, you know, and I, and I think, I think that's special, you know, because the yeah. kids know that they're, yeah. they're smarter than you, than you would think, you know, and they see it. And um, so, I, you know, for us, that's been just such a huge thing. Hmm. And f from your approach, also from, from my understanding and just by, by talking to you and listening to you, uh, I can tell um, you have all type of different coaches and all, all are great. You know, you have like more the, highly uh rah rah motivational you you're definitely more the type from what i think that looks somebody in the eyes uh, looks at them uh, as a young man with respects and tell them what needs to be done and expects it uh, to be done and, and models it right so um i'd like for you to to guide maybe the the younger athlete or the parent okay who um is looking to kind of further uh, their football and academic journey. Yep. And they don't know exactly what to do next. So how do I even go about the process of reaching out, you know, to, to a prep school? And as a parent who wants to support uh, my child, how do I even go about the process or figuring out if that's the right place uh, for my child or not? Yeah. So, I mean, I think the first thing reaching out, I mean, whether it be through, you know, Twitter, Instagram, email, I mean, whatever is best for that family, that's the first thing I'd say is, you know, and definitely reach out to a wide range of schools. Um, in terms of figuring out which school you have to go and visit, right? And, and every school is very different, right? They might look very similar on paper, um, but every school is different. And I think, you know, finding the right fit for you where you can you know, again, as come as close as you can to reaching your potential is what's, what's really important. So um, another thing I, I've said to families too, is if it doesn't work out here, I mean, there's 45 other prep schools and I know almost every one of those head coaches, I'm happy to reach out to those guys. And, you know, cause at the end of the day, you know, if I can help out a kid who, who might not be a good fit for us, but if I can help him get to another prep school and find the right fit for them, that's great. Very cool. I've, Two more questions for you, yep. uh, Coach. Uh, first one is, what does football mean to you? And I know that's yeah. a loaded question. Maybe we could yeah. talk all day about that. But, yeah, I'm curious to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, you know, a lot of what I've already said in, you know, family, you know, in, in kind of having that brotherhood is, is there's nothing like it. Um, but also helping you deal with adversity. You know, I think as a coach, you know, when I was a young GA and, you know, how to figure out how to do this and that you just, you know, you just kind of have to figure things out. And um, I, you know, I have that mentality and, and how I live my life every day, which is sometimes good, sometimes bad, but, you know, dealing with adversity and, and finding a way, you know, and said, so, you know, I, I, I had an assistant coach or a head coach tell me one time, he said, don't tell me what the problem is. I know what the problem is. Help me find yeah. the solution, you know? Yeah. And um, I think just trying to, come up with solutions and everyday problems or whatever it might be. And, you know, not losing your cool and staying calm and collected. Um, I, I would say all those things have such a huge, huge mm. part of football. My college coach used to tell us that uh, all the time, find a way, find a way. Yep. So maybe football is a small world, you know, it all comes from little coaching trees right. somewhere. Maybe a coaching tree, tree is connecting uh, somewhere, but yeah, yeah they used to tell us that Never every know. single day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Perfect. And my my last question is really about the uh, athletes that you get to coach. Okay. Yep. That you get to coach. Obviously, um, you're proud of them. Obviously, you see them come in and uh, leave. You know, as uh, as young men doing great things. Um, if we could just talk about these athletes for a second. And if you could tell us what makes your job that much more special every day, and I know you've talked about it, just the bonds that are being created 
you know, just the experience that they get. But maybe if there's a transformation that you see in a lot of them also, uh, what kind of fires you up that much more about? Yeah, that's, that's exactly team. why I coach. I mean, that, that's, you know, to be able to see kids grow in the time that they're here, whether they're the postgrad, they're here for one year, whether they're coming in as a freshman, whatever it might be, and just mm. to see their growth, right? And to, to see them walk across the stage on graduation and, wow. you know, it, it, it's special, you know? And, um, you know, I, as a high school football coach, I think we can have such a huge impact on on our kids' lives. And, you know, hopefully, you know, my players would say that, that I do things the right way and that I've I've left them better men than when they, they came here. Um, but there's, there's, I'll tell you, one of my favorite things is when former players reach out and shoot me a text, you know, just to touch base, you know, and um, it, it's awesome. Like that is one of my favorite things when, when those guys reach back out and, you know, thank, thank me for a great experience that they've had at Williston. But the reality is, that, you know, I, I feel like I'm a small part of it because there's so many great people here that are, are helping them out. Oh, well, that's awesome, coach. And uh, it's great to see how uh, through your passion, uh, through also just your, your history, how you've been introduced um, to this game maybe, but from a different perspective at a younger age. It was bigger than just playing because you got to be around coaches uh, that truly wanted to make an impact, and you took that and are definitely running away uh, with it, creating a great family atmosphere. And uh, one way or another, you know, that's what's cool about, about sports or life in general is that we don't get to – necessarily know how much of an impact we have on someone sometimes because we just do what we do but then you see different things pop up here and there yeah. and it's that much more amazing so i appreciate you and everything that you do uh definitely no thank you I, again as i said before i really appreciate you having me on and feel free to reach out if i can help in any way perfect perfect so this is it for today uh coach definitely and for you guys uh listening as usual, okay, if you learned anything, uh, if you if it helps you on your journey, uh, the only thing to do is simple, is to hit that subscribe button, is to share. If you guys have questions uh, about anything, it'll be my pleasure, you know, so make sure to reach out. Uh, also, if you want to reach out uh, to Coach and also get to know more about Will Estate, you're welcome. You said through a uh, Twitter, basically. Yeah, Twitter, media. Instagram, email, whatever works best for sure. Perfect, perfect. So this is it for now. Until next time, guys, I appreciate you. Take care.